Hi, this is Tanya Walker. Thank you so much for joining me here on One Day to Love. Today, my guest is a different kind of actor. He's a voice actor. He's won earphone awards for just about every book he's done. He's won so many awards and he's done over 400 books. He's really incredibly talented. He plays all these different characters in these books and he sounds totally different um, in each one. He sometimes works with other actors and so it's more like a like a almost like a old radio reading, I guess like a radio show. But most of the time it seems like he's alone and he's doing all these different characters. He's done The Great Believer, Oliver Loving, uh, Life and Death. I was a teenage slasher, which I'm reading right now. Showmance, they both die at the end. Simon versus Homo Sapiens Agenda, which is one of his favorites. And just so many that I, I couldn't I couldn't write them all. Um, he's just fantastic, really good actor. And a lot of people wonder, how do you get into this? How does one pursue this as a career? Well, he's going to tell you. And he's going to tell you the other things he's up to now. And I want you to stay tuned. If you have any questions for him after, just go ahead and write them in the comments and I'll pass them along and we'll either do a follow-up or I'll ask him to write in the comments his answers to your questions. Okay. Take care. Thank you so much. And like and subscribe for me so I can stay on the air. God bless. I'll talk to you soon. Enjoy Michael Crouch. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Welcome to the show. You're in a real recording booth. Yep. yep. I wonder why. I wonder why that is. Yep. Yeah. I get a lot of work done in here. It's so cool. It's so it's cool. Also just like a nice isolated space to do things like this. And yeah, it's fantastic. This is where I meet with my therapist too. Nice is it? Yeah. And private. Yeah. Do you, perfect. Do you live with anybody? Uh, yes, my my husband, Danny. Okay, so you, nobody gets to hear any of your private details when you're in that little box. Exactly. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. I have been really enjoying listening to you. I've been listening to you yeah. on Audible a lot. Oh, and wow. um, yeah, I'm I'm really kind of fascinated. What um, have you been listening to? Well, funny you should ask. This is, I was a teenage slasher, mm. okay? Yeah. And um, I don't read slasher anything. I don't see slasher anything. I can't deal with horror movies. Yeah. But the way you do this, I just, I, I chested it earlier so people can hear it. So they're so f heavy, aren't they? Excuse my language. I mean, All your language. Texas is shaking each time one of our feet comes down on the tiles of Deke's entryway. Owls are fluttering down from circle systems. Their wings cup in the air. Prairie dogs are looking up to their crumbling ceilings. Porch lights are trembling. Dogs are barking. And there's so many places where you change characters and they're totally different voices. And it's just so cool. Ooh, thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Oh, I just, I just love it. I need to know that you decided you were going to be a musical theater major. Uh-oh, there you go. Uh-oh. Somebody, <laughs> somebody was somebody was trying to call me at the same time. So Brian yelled over the music, and she's still trying to call me. Okay. Anyway, I've got to get back to where you're doing different people. I just think it's incredible. Um, so I read that you went to school to be a musical theater person. So you so you obviously sing, and and you've got really great control of your voice because of that. I'm sure. Yeah, it all it all ties together. You know, I yeah. rarely sing these days, but uh, my background is in theater and musical theater, and right. I went to college for it. And, right, right, right. Well, the thing that I'm the thing that I'm fascinated by is that most people want to be seen. Most of us actors want our faces to be seen. You know, it's like um, it's kind of an unspoken thing that we're vain and. We want to be seen and we yeah. want everybody to be famous. And so when you walk down the street, people will know your name and they'll know your face and all that, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody gets into it for that, I don't think. But it sort of becomes part of, you know, part of the deal. Mm -hmm. So at some point you decided that you didn't 
really care about that or that you like this other op- option better or what? How did you move from being an actor and a, and a musical theater person to, to being a voice actor? Well, I, so I kind of did educational theater nonstop from like middle school through college, maybe even in classes before that in elementary school. So it was kind of a big part of my life for a long time. And then by the, the end of college, though, I kind of was feeling like I wasn't as in love with it as I was when I was a kid with theater. And um, I had never really experimented much with on camera. There were very few on camera classes at Ithaca. Um, and I didn't know anything about voiceover at that point, but I just, I just kind of fell out of love with it. And I got to this point after college where it's like, okay, do I love it and not still love it enough to build a life and career around it? And for me, the answer was no. And I, and I was, and it helped to be surrounded by people who had, who loved, who did still loved it that much. And I could see the difference between us. Between the two of you. One of them just, yeah. they can't live without it. And the other person's going, eh, it's not to take it or leave it. Yeah. So, but I, I still wanted to act in some form. I still wanted to be creative and I got curious about voiceover. And um, first of it was about animation. I was curious. I was fascinated by how, the voice actors on The Simpsons, they voice so many characters and they're so versatile and I mean, they're insanely talented. It is. It's really, really weird. They can sound so different and they can, you know, they could do three or four different people on the show, characters on the show, and you wouldn't even know it. I know, I know. I've passed Hank Azaria on the street a few times and I haven't interrupted him to say like, oh my God, I think you're amazing. But You have to do that. He's a very nice guy. Yeah. Yeah, he was married to Helen Hunt, and I knew her. Um, we worked together, and I just think that would be fun for you to. Well, I should do that because I think yeah. it's brilliant. It'll make him feel good too. Yeah. It never, it never does anything but make you feel good. Yeah, you know? well, makes sense. I know. I appre- I really appreciate it when people reach out to me. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I get it. Um. Uh, where was I? So you, so you saw these animated, heard these animated people on the, you know, cartoons and, and uh, animated shows. Yeah. yeah. So that was my inspiration. And I did more research on the business. I, I bought a book that was kind of an overview of the business. And from very early on, I learned that for most people, commercial work is your gateway into the business. And there, even if you're in LA, which I was not, I was in New York. Um, most people in voiceover don't do animation exclusively. There are, uh, there are exceptions, obviously, but, um, a lot of them do like a lot of their income comes from commercials and then they also do some animation. So I was like, okay, a place for me to start is to like, and take an introduction to commercial voiceover class. And how commercials do you mean? Like, hi, this is, uh, you know, maybe you wouldn't say your name, but you'd say, this is, you know, Budweiser. I really love Budweiser. It's really fantastic. And I'm, and I'm a guy, whatever you say. Um, um, so, 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 I mean, you're talking about a Budweiser commercial, not a commercial like, you know, like the, the, the radio commercials and a TV and radio. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I took a class. I, first of all, I was never one, like uh, some people get into the business, into voiceover or audio books and like, Oh, people say I have a great voice. I should do this. No one ever said that to me. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, I mean, it, honestly, I questioned going into it whether I had the right sound for it. But you learn early on that it's it's not really about your voice. It, your voice will, the sound of yours will determine what type of stuff you do. But um, you don't need a particular sound to succeed. Um, and so, yeah, long story short, I took this class and I, I found it really interesting. And I just... I enjoyed being in front of the microphone and just the the process of it. And what had changed for me with theater is I still loved the product. I still love it as an audience member. Mm -hmm. And I still did love that feeling of having done a great show. But everything in between from auditions to rehearsals and all that, I just didn't love it enough anymore. But with voiceovers... I don't love it either. I don't think anybody loves the audition process now. Well, you yes. Know, that, um, that. And, and now you have to do everything yourself at home. You might as well be living in Timbuktu, 
you know, it's, yeah. it's, yeah, it's I hate it. I've got two auditions for tomorrow and, and it just, it, it makes me for the first time, look at the audition and go, well, how big of a project is it? How much am I going to make? When are they going to shoot it? Where are they going to put me up? I, I I used to never care. I didn't give a crap. You know what I mean? It's a job, right? Yeah. And and now it's like, you know, is it going to be worth it? Because I've got I've got to move all my furniture. I've got to put a king size sheet up on the wall. Yeah. I've got to tack it to the ceiling by myself and not kill myself standing on a ladder and a stool. I've got to get the somebody I got to beg somebody to come over or be on the phone with me to read with me. I've got to spend two hours doing my hair and my face to stand there. And then I don't really have a camera that I can back up far enough so that if I hold it horizontally, they can see my feet. Yeah. Cause they don't want to see your feet this way. They want to see your feet this way, which means that the wall has to be so long. Do you understand what I'm saying? And you yeah. start to say to yourself, you know, <laughs> I don't know if I want to do this. Or not. Yeah, well, <laughs> because yeah. It, because it, it's a it's a whole it's a whole day or two of, of your life, and it used to be I'd get in the car and go and do the audition and come home, but that was that. Yeah. yeah. So it's just yeah, it, that is a lot. It's I'm so glad hard. I don't do that. <laughs> so hard, you can't believe how hard it is. It's really hard, and there's some people that don't think that, and I don't know why or how they do it because I am a perfectionist. So I want, I want it to be the way they want it to be. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, I love the idea of voiceovers. I love doing radio. Radio was great because I didn't even have to do my hair. Yeah. I did radio in, in on the East coast. I really liked that a lot. What, what's, what sort of radio? I had a talk show. I had a political talk show and I had an entertainment talk show on WSTC WNLK and um and I loved it and I loved having people in and um I I had a lot of New York stars people from the Sopranos and things like that it was Saturday Night Live it was really really fun um and sometimes they came into the studio and sometimes they didn't but either way I was there and that was fun you know I like that so anyway so you get so your first class i want people to know what book you read what book was it that you read that gave you the information do you remember oh god the book you read about about voiceover i i don't because my first book can... michael shirtliff's audition oh i know that right right um well if you think I, you that... know i i can picture the cover but i can't remember the title okay well if you think of it let me buy this guy james allberger Okay, we can look him up. Yeah. If okay. This was like in 2008. It's been a minute. Not long, actually, but okay. Yeah. All right. So you, you and, and so then what happened? Well, I took this class and I was like, okay, well, I, I just, I enjoy being in the booth. Um, I just, I just, and I do enjoy the process more and it was exciting to feel that again. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was like, I, I think I love this enough to, to keep at it. Cause it's, it's, it's very competitive and it's very hard to break in. It's almost impossible. Yeah. According to my sister, my sister yeah. wanted to do it and and she was in, in Manhattan beach and it was like closed for backup singers and things, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so then I just through different classes i eventually did a demo and the first now, what one did the I did, what did the classes teach you oh i just about i don't do a ton of commercial work anymore but like in commercial classes they teach you to just like i don't know different ways of approaching the copy it all happens so fast so it's like how quickly can you get this script bring yourself to it bring you know, make a choice about the type of energy you're bringing to it and, right, right, and right. go. Yeah. Um, so it was, it was a lot of that. Um, and I took some animation classes too. Um, and that, that would be fun. I've never done that. I've taken commercial classes, but I've never taken animation. They were fun. I did uh, Bob Bergen, great animation guy. He did uh, a New York City workshop. Um, I don't know if he's done one in a while, but... Um, I did that with him and that, that was exciting. That was, that was really cool. And, and, you know, I learned about different ways to manipulate my voice and, 
And just like I was saying how like, it's not really about the sound of your voice, like Bob emphasizes that um, you know, the work, it's, it's to acting, period. Mm -hmm. It's not about achieving a certain sound. Mm -hmm. um, and so he really emphasized that. Yeah, I can hear that. You do so many characters and it's fascinating to me and you're Southern so often in the stuff I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. listening to. But it's not just this, I've listened to a lot. And, yeah. and and you've got a southern. They just keep putting you in the southern thing, and I've you're not that. southern. And I was like, I was like, I know he's not southern. I I'm southern, but I knew you weren't southern. And so well, I was, I'm, I'm from Texas. Does that count? As no. Why? You don't sound like you're from Texas. See, that's you. That's great. You fixed. Yeah, yeah. I'm, you changed it, or you whatever you did. But well, yeah, yeah. I so I grew up in Austin. Both mm -hmm. of my parents are from East Texas. They have stronger accents than I do. They still oh yeah. Do. Um, growing up in Austin, though, I didn't have much of one. Um, and then in college and voice and speech class, any regionalisms right. got sort of ironed out. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. but they still pop up here and there. And it's, they, it's, they sure give you a lot of those. You get a lot of those jobs. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I make sure people know I can do it. Yeah, it's really anyway, good. You know, it's really any good. specialties I can throw out there to make it easier for casting. Yeah, it's really good. I, I I thought it was fantastic. But the, also the different characters. Um, sometimes you're telling a story like a narrator and you're not in the first person. And then other times you're telling the story from the first person. And then you as that person are talking to another person and you do that other person too. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Yeah, I I really... I, 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 all the, the back and forth dialogue in, in the books, I think is so fun because I don't do a, a lot of animation, but most of the animation I have done, even if you're doing it, you're sharing a scene with another person, they're often not in the room with you. And you just have to record your lines back to back and pretend you're reacting off of what the other person is saying, even though you're not actually hearing them. Uh, at least with audiobooks, I can play off of myself and what I did right before that. And so I do feel that momentum that it, that I've created and this, yeah. and, and I can ride that wave instead of just kind of being in my head and not really have anyone to play off of. It's not always the case, but it often is. Well, I can hear it. It's really, really good. And it does move the story along and, and it creates the, it, it's really hard to determine sometimes whether you're playing the other person or not. Yeah, that's cool. It's really good. I mean, it's really, really good. I mean, I know you've won all these awards. What are those big awards that you that you've got the earpiece awards? Is that what it's called? Uh, Audiophile Magazine has as earphones awards. That's the one. Yeah. Earpieces are what people my age wear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, they they do that. Um, it's it's the way I think of this kind of along the lines of getting like a starred review from a literary publication like book list or publishers weekly is sort of the audio equivalent of that. Um, and um, there's industry awards, the audio awards and. You won them all. I mean, it's, it's incredible. I saw the list of all the awards you won the books. I've got a, I've got like this picture. I've got this picture here, this picture. Oh yeah. These are all books you've done. Yeah. It's insane. No Good Deed, Wink. I, I bought this one, The Great Believers. I bought that Oh, one. that's one of my favorites. Yeah, I bought that. I could tell I was going to like that. Oliver Loving, that looks good. Yes, Maybe No, So. Yes, Yes, No, Maybe So. Yes, No, Maybe So. What's that one about? Oh, goodness. Why? Well, uh, Do you remember? Young adult book, two-person narration. Um, teens, they're, they're I just it's, love the fact it's, that you can do that. I it's it. been a minute, but it takes place during an election and they've become politically active and they're knocking on doors. And I, I just I, I love it. I love it. So when you, when I saw you also, you were in with like five or six other people and I didn't even know they did that. Where, what? You, you've done books with two or three other people, four or five. Oh, other, yeah. Three or four oh, other that people. happens a lot. Yeah. Multicasts. It does? I didn't know that. Yeah. Where there's only audiobooks I listen to are the self autobiographies of whoever it is that's talking. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, I interviewed uh, my friend Marilee's dad, who 
was the publicist, um, first private publicist in Hollywood. And he was Frank Sinatra's publicist and the Rat Pack's publicist and all these huge people. So, you know, he's supposed to be telling his story. You know, last week I had Ed Begley Jr. You know, he'll be telling his story, you know. So um, Nadine is a, is, a, is a therapist, so she's going to be telling her story. So I've never listened to a book before. And it's just, I mean, I've listened to books about, about that, but not, not stories. And it's just, it's really a whole new world for me because I love to read. You know, I've been a reader since I was like three or four years old. I was a bookworm. So I just, it's a whole new world and it's so much fun, you know? Yeah. It's It's like really being entertained instead of just learning something or historical something or, you know, I'm trying to learn how they came up with this program or that program in the government. So I'm listening to, you know what I mean? It's not fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And listening to you was really fun. I really loved it. I hope that everybody at home realizes that because I've never done it before. I've done, you know, lots of other things, but not, not that. And the kids, you're right. You're re- doing a lot of young people, young people books. Yeah. So that was my gateway into the business is the very first book I auditioned for. It was a Western of all things, which I would not have expected this, but it was a, it was a, it was a Louis L'Amour Western. It was a first person narrative uh, told from a 17 year old's point of view. And um, at the time I was not 17, but I, I could uh, <laughs> I figured that. Hopefully, hopefully still can convince and pull off a convincing teen sound. I, you I get can, it. I've heard it. I've heard it a couple of times. Um, and so that, um, and it also was a teen, not only just, we had the young thing going, but they, he needed to have a Southern dialect. And I was like, oh, I can do that. So that was my gateway into the business was young and Southern. And so I, from there, I did more of that. It took, it didn't just, happen after that i wasn't suddenly getting book after book it took a lot of time and networking and patience but um that was the first one is it a different agent well i, I did get my very first audiobook through my voiceover agents atlas talent i didn't even um, know they had voiceover agents yeah so I'm, t- I'm saying all these things and asking you these questions because there's a lot of people that would probably love to be able to get into this business or at least give it a shot and no one has a clue how to do it I mean, it's hard enough to figure out how to do what I do, you know what I mean? So nobody has a clue, including me, about how you how you break into this this genre. So I just want people to have a shot at it if they want to, you know? Yeah. I mean, so agents are are one way. I mean, at that. So I I last told you, so I started taking classes and I eventually took a. I started freelancing with different commercial voiceover agents in town and was going out for auditions actually in person at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also home auditions too, those were happening as well. Wow. Um, and then eventually I signed with my voiceover agents, Atlas Talent. Um, and they did, they didn't send me a lot of audiobook auditions, but they did send me one and it was perfect timing. It was, I, so it started working in other areas of voiceover for a few years. And then I took an audiobook narration class with this producer director and coach Paul Rubin and it's that's, um, that's not Paul Rubin Paul Rubin that's not the Pee Wee Herman Paul Rubin no yeah I believe Paul Rubens right whatever yeah. okay got it got it okay yeah, got it, it. Uh, okay R-U-B-E-N. okay this Paul Rubin. okay uh, I just wanted to make sure guy um he's he's been in the business for a long time and I, it was like a, it was a six week course. It met like every Tuesday, I think in the evenings, uh, once a week. And I just, I found it fascinating and it just so happened that I got this audition for this book for random house, like between weeks three and four. And I was, and it was a record at home audition. It's like, okay, I'm going to apply what I've been learning in this class to this audition and see what happens. And then right when the class ended, I found out I got the book. It was incredible timing and it never happens that way. Um, but in this case, the timing was just perfect. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. So how long does it take? How many times, how many hours, how long, if a book takes 
you know, a person like me, like it took me a day and a half to read Ed Begley Jr.'s book, but I was reading it to myself, right? So I'm not trying to play anything or be anyone, I'm just reading. So how long does it take to do a book for you? Like a, like a 300, 400 page book? Well, I don't usually take measurements of how long the preparation takes because oh, that no. would be discouraging because I do a lot of prep and I don't, if I, if I broke it down by how much I'm getting paid per preparation hour, it's not, it would, it would annoy me. Um, I do the prep because I want to come in and, you know, to the you're an actor, you're doing process. the actor prep. That's um, what you're doing. I do that too. Yeah. Hours yes. and um, hours and hours and hours of that. Yeah. Um, but, and so, so if we're talking studio time now, let's say in the end, it's a six hour audiobook. The finished product is six hours long. You would do that in two recording days, probably to 10 to four or 10 to five recording days. You read it all the way through. I mean, do you have uh, to do things as a director say, no, I don't like that. Or I like something different or does that happen? It, it, all depends. Um, some books you will have directors and other times you won't. Um, my very first book, I was lucky. I did have a director, a very good director, David Rapkins, his name. And um, I also had an engineer in the room. So it was, it was the best possible circumstances um, for my very first book. There were two sets of ears in the studio who had experience and knew what they were doing. And there was me who did not know what I was doing. It was at the very beginning for me. Mm -hmm. And so I, it, that was a great way to learn. Some people starting these days do their first project, they're completely self-recording and self-directing and self-engineering. And I mean, oftentimes I, I'm sure they succeed and come up, the final part is excellent, but it's got to be harder <laughs> to start out that way if you, without any guidance. And what if it's not what they want? Well, that I'm sure that happens too. Yeah, it, it's going to definitely happen if they don't have anybody there to say, "Yeah, that was I the mean, right." But, yeah, but in that case, though, it's it's you know it's probably on the producer, you know, but, mm -hmm. that you don't just stick a newbie in there and uh, just throw them to the wolves and and just pray that it turns out good. Like you know, we need support. Well, the other thing that I hear in your in your um, in your work are full people. You really are a really, really good actor. I mean, I hear a full human being and I hear the subtext of what happened to this person and where this person's from and the relationship with this person and the, and the other people that you're talking to. I mean, you do such a good job. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just wonderful. And Christian told me that you were his favorite person to listen to to read a book. And I, again, I had only had you know, a little bit of experience with a lot of experience with, you know, how to's and self helps and, you know, podcasts and all that, but I'd never really had, um, anybody act. It's, it's like radio used to be when they used to have, you know, the shows on the radio and people would sit around and, and listen to them because they didn't have a TV. I mean, that was a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and this is just fascinating. And you get to see the people in your head, just like you do when you're reading, except that you're allowing a different dimension, you know, of what they sound like. And, and then when you, when you do your, how you're feeling, talk in the words, it's, it, it comes across so well. It comes across so, like, there's so much subtext there. So I can imagine how long that takes you, you know? Yeah, well, I, I, I really appreciate that. First about, you know, if that they sound like whole and real people. That's always my goal. Of course. Um, I wanted you to know that I heard that because I, I would think that would be my goal too, if it was me. Yeah, why well, I, I appreciate that. And then, um, yeah, connecting to the subtext. I mean, that's that's so important. And if if the job were just about spitting out words i wouldn't have done 400 plus audiobooks i'd be bored as hell <laughs> and i'm sure listeners would be too but first and foremost i would be yeah that's so boring to mm -hmm. me if it's just about ai spitting out words fuck you. No. yeah heck with that absolutely with that. Not. no um so, i mean what's interesting to me is is getting 
humbling yourself to the text, getting underneath the words, the energy underneath the words, and then most, and the biggest thing to me that makes a good performance versus just, I mean, a great performance versus just a good performance is staying in the moment like any good actor. And you allow the text to move you, 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 you let your gut drive you and you let the text move you from sentence to sentence, paragraph to paragraph and see how it comes out. Because that's the, the fascinating thing about this work. And the scary thing is there's, there's so much material that there's no way you could rehearse it all. There's no way. No. So you have, you have no choice but to rely on your gut and to let it guide you through it. And the, the cool thing is that's when the best stuff happens anyway. So it can be very freeing. Yeah, I can imagine. The only thing that that would be a little bit nerve wracking to me is um, as an actor, have you ever been on a set with someone who's acting by themselves? Um, well, it, you know, I haven't been on it, set. It's too a often. big problem. It's a big problem. If, yeah. if they're not yeah. listening oh, yeah. and, they're, and they're not reacting and they're not, they're not, they're not, they're not there. I mean, they're just, they're like in their head and they're doing their own thing and it's not, it's no fun, you know? So what, when, when ever that's ever happened to me, I, I go shake them. I go, I go do something, you know what I mean? I get their attention because that's not going to work. And in daytime, you don't have time to fix it. You better fix it right now. Yeah. So, worst case, I'll think of something. I mean, my character will think of something to get their freaking attention because hello, I'm talking to you. I mean, even if it's that, even if it's that, because you, because your, your acting is not a solo gig, right? Yeah. So what is interesting to me is it sounds like you're with someone else, which is just fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it's really fantastic because when I've been with someone else and they're not there, um, it's frustrating. Now I've done a lot of monologues. Um, I had a character on One Life to Live where I couldn't, I couldn't talk to anybody but an urn. I talked to an urn for like six months. So I, <laughs> <laughs> so I pretended that I heard what the urn was saying back and that wasn't written in the script. Yeah. You know, so, um, so I just acted like I heard what he said before yeah. I went on to the next thing. And so I would re respond to that. And it was funny. Everybody thought it was funny, you know? Yeah. Um, sometimes I would cry. Sometimes I would think of what he said and have it be really moving, you know, whatever it was. Yeah. But there wasn't anybody else there. And 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 that was kind of fun because I didn't have to do it more than once or twice, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but but I just, I just wanted you to know that I hear that. I hear that and what you're doing. What is that like when you don't have somebody else? when I'm recording and- And you're playing the other person, but there isn't anybody else there. I, you know, honestly, I don't really think about it because I've been doing it for so long. I guess so. Um, yeah. I just, like I was saying before, is at least with the, with the back and forth dialogue, um, I'm at least playing off of what I did in the line before and not imagining what some ghost is saying. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, mm -hmm. So I, in, in that sense, there is momentum from, maybe it's these other sides of my personality that are talking and playing back and forth. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe that's a way to just, good way to describe it. Um, but, you know, coming up too, there are times, uh, there are some productions, full cast productions, I'm gonna have one next month where we will actually, it's, it's all different actors and we will all be in a big studio together and we will get to actually listen and work together. Wow. Wow. Now, that, why would they do that? If they've got somebody like you that can play all the parts, why would they do that? I mean, well, I, I can do a certain amount, but I, you know, I'm no replacement, you know, for, for 20 other people. I think you could do it, but okay. So. Okay. <laughs> From what I heard. Um, yeah. They're just, there are different productions with, with, with different styles and energies. And this one is written, it's written like a play or, or a radio play. Oh, okay. Um, and so we have different actors in most of the roles and um, we'll get to all be together. And that would be a blast. That would be a blast. And I wouldn't have to worry about my hair. If you get another one of those, let me know. Okay. Yeah. No, it's, it's really interesting. I just think it's fascinating because it's another, 
it's another way of performing that's that's actually more authentic. It doesn't have all the, you know, all the bells and whistles and the makeup artists and the powder puff and all that. You know, it's like there's a real um not an urgency, but it's almost an urgency. It's it's like being on stage. If you're if you're you know, if you're doing you can't stop every 30 seconds, right? I mean, you have to keep going, right? Yeah. I would think. Yeah. I would yeah. Think so. yeah. <clears throat> but you know, thank thank goodness for editing. Yeah. Um, because there's so much material you're gonna mess up, it's inevitable. So it's just wonderful to not have to nail it all in one take because that would be impossible. <laughs> we have to do that a lot now. Did you, have you heard from your friends that are in daytime that we're doing like rehearsing, we're rehearsing uh, dress rehearsals or taping dress. Oh, really? Rehearsals. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You're taping dress rehearsals. If you get a dress rehearsal, it's just insane because they're trying to move so fast. Yeah. You know, and they used to call me one take Tanya, but it wasn't because I wanted to be. Yeah. You know, I could always do it one more time. I could always do it one more time. And I always thought one more time would be better. Right. But um, there's no time for that now. You know, yeah. kind of interesting. So when when you're thinking about playing in an animated thing or when you're on your own, do you make up voices that you could use somewhere else? Like for the for cartoons or for The Simpsons or for something like that? Do you create voices that are like in your back pocket that you could like pull out and use or something like that? I, I when I was starting out, I did kind of, I had like a repertoire of like characters that were in my I back pocket. I even had a like a, a sheet where I kind of like fleshed them out and I would pull and I, I still have that binder and I would like That's pull it cool. out. Okay, you know, Sam is this, I don't know, whatever. I. I love Lately, that. I, I, um, having done, uh, you know, the bulk of what I do uh, now is audiobooks. And so now when I read a book, I, I don't have to consult that binder. I can just read, be like, okay, maybe I'll try this. Yeah. Usually, I don't, I, sometimes I won't even have to write it down. I'll just remember that's mm -hmm. how I've got a good memory for it now because it's, it's muscle memory now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if you were going to write a cartoon of your own or an animated story of your own, you've got all those people in you that you can pull out, I would think. Yeah, they're there. And if, what about if, what about women? Voicing female characters? Well, I heard you do a female character in one yeah. of the I was listening. Um, that sounded something... like a girl. I couldn't believe it. It was like, you're a guy, then you're a girl, then you're a guy, then you're a girl. I, I really, I was shocked. I was really shocked. Well, that's one thing. That's another thing I think is so fun and fascinating about audiobooks is that I can slip into these other characters' skins that I would never be cast as on camera or, yeah. or on stage. Um, and I, I love, you know, voicing teenage girls or, or, or women. I, it's just... I access kind of that side of me and I, and I spit, spit the words out. I don't I heard that. that. That's why when I, I saw I you were going to be working with an actress, I didn't think you needed to. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I find that really interesting. And also like another thing that fascinates me about the work is that you can really take advantage of the microphone's sensitivity. Like I, I, like when I do female characters specifically, I, I don't maybe don't even necessarily need to raise my pitch or do any, you know, fancy mask adjustments. I can just maybe make my voice ever so slightly breathier. And with my bass voice, that will read as more feminine. Um, and the mic picks it up, even if it's the tiniest little adjustment, it's going to come out really clearly on the track, even if it feels like I'm doing next to nothing. I find I find that so interesting because I probably in the beginning I felt like I had to do more. Uh-huh. And now I it didn't take long to realize that I can make really tiny adjustments and that will make a whole new character. Well, there was one that it was a it, it was a kid. It was a new day. I think that was what it was called. There were so many. Oh, that really short kids book? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A new day. I think that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to play it if I have it here. Everybody needs to just. That one's fun. I'll put all this in the 
in my comments. I don't know where I put that. That might be, I bought that one. So it was in, it wasn't in audiobooks. It was in the other one, the other books on, you know, there's two apps you can get on your phone. You can get book, Audible and you can get audiobooks. Mm -hmm. So I belong to Audible. So I have all these free ones. So I yeah. downloaded a bunch of free ones, but I bought some on the other, on the other yeah. one. Libro FM is a good one too. Which one? Libro FM, Libro.fm. Yeah, I never knew, knew of any of these things. I can't wait to listen to the rest of these. And then I got stuck. I've got I'm, I'm like, oh God, I've got to listen to Al Pacino's. And oh God, <laughs> you know, it's got to, you know, it's crazy. It can yeah. become a, like an addiction, you know? Yeah. So where do you live now? I live in New York City in the South Bronx. My husband and I bought um an apartment not far from Yankee Street. Congratulations! That's like the hugest thing in the whole world. Yeah. It is, it is. I mean, everything in New York is so ridiculously expensive that if you can actually buy an apartment, oh my God. Yeah, it was it was a huge accomplishment. It, we we closed bef very shortly before the pandemic. Oh um, my God. And um, our place up here, it's, it's, it's a great balance because it's still so close to Manhattan. Like if I needed to get to a, fancy studio in midtown it's just still such a short subway right away but we have so much more space than we did in manhattan it's like it's it's huge for new york it's probably normal size for anywhere else but it's huge for new york so that's we are awesome. very glad and it was at a price we could afford so it just oh, i love that i love that yeah i have a girlfriend that lives i used to pass her house on the way from connecticut to new york on the um henry hudson parkway because she's in the bronx so you go through, you, you go right through Brook, 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 whatever it is, Brookville, Bronxville, Bronxville, and then, and then her little area, which I just loved. And um, it was more family too. It seemed like it was a safe family area. I like that yeah. a lot. Um, but I, I just, my daughter lives in Manhattan and she just got an apartment with three other people. I have one daughter in LA and one daughter in New York. And the one in New York just sent me a photo last week. You'll identify with this. She said, this is my room. It's kind of long and thin, mom. And um, it's actually 67 inches wide. And so um, a full size bed is this many inches wide and a queen size bed is this many inches wide. And I really don't wanna sleep in a full size bed. But if I put a queen size bed, there's no room for a table. But I'm thinking I'm going to get a queen size. <laughs> I, oh I my god! I yes. That oh my that god! I was like, <laughs> no. So I said, get a full size bed, and then there's seven inches. So I looked up on Amazon. I found seven inch tables that she could sit right there, and she could put a lamp on it, and they even had plugs for your phone. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know if she's going to listen because you know she's 25. So. Yeah. Chances are probably slim to none, but she's going to listen to me. <laughs> but yeah. if that's what we live in in New York. It's tiny. Yeah. So I'm glad you yeah. got a house. And I'm so happy you got a place in the Bronx. That's wonderful. So what's next for you? This great, big, huge one with all the cast members of all, and what's it called? Um, I, I can probably say the title, but I haven't double checked so oh you're not like you're allowed to talk about it oh yeah, it, it, i don't i don't i don't i'm not positive so i'll just you'll have to get that. you'll have to get back with me and tell me yes um but i i've got I have some soul or a, a three-person project coming up uh, it's historical fiction called the refugee's daughter that's next on the list and oh that sounds like fun yeah and what's the serpent king what was that i've got that here oh that's a young adult book that i did in about in 2015 or late love 2015 these, or these articles of you you're so oh, handsome look at that yeah and you've got the bluest oh. eyes i've ever seen just beautiful oh, thank beautiful you. Thank you. so <laughs> tell me about the serpent king oh gosh the serpent king um plot wise i i see see what i can remember i do remember it's a very good book um the author jeff zentner He's written, I've done a few of his books and um, he's a very talented writer. Oh. Um, that one is one where there, it's told from three different points of view. I so see there are three very, different narrators. 
Um, yeah, I see th two other people, somebody named Myers and somebody named Sawyer. Ethan yep. Sawyer and that sounds right. Ariadne Myers, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this was in 2015. That was a long time ago. When did you start? Yeah, yeah I believe that one was, and it was published in 2016. Um, I started in audiobooks that that class I took, that introduction that I took. What year was that? 2013. Wow. And then I recorded that very first one, that Western, at the end of 2013, and it came out in early 2014. Wow, it's really incredible. Well, I think it would be a blast to do because you get to play so many different characters. And, it's cool. and, like, and one of my favorites is like, I love when I have to voice older women. Like, <laughs> there was this one book where there was like a 90 year old woman. And I don't know, like, I just channel my grandma and I get to sort of ease into that sort of character that again I would never be cast as on camera no. but like in this I I am able to access that side of me and that's exciting yeah are your parents still alive uh-huh yeah do you, they are. Does, does your do, do your parents think you sound like their grandma their mothers or their fathers when you just do these old people I think they can maybe hear it a little. I think it's closer to my mom's mom and she's listened to, I know at least one of those books where those, a character like that. Well, I think she'd be fascinated by it. You know what I mean? When you hear that coming out of your young son, your mom's mm -hmm. voice coming out of your young son. That's pretty amazing. It really is. Well, I'm very excited that I got to have you on the show today. And, um, and I'm a fan now. I'm a really big fan. So I'm going to be listening to all your stuff. And, um, and if you have anything else that you want to plug or talk about, call me and I'll have you back on the show. Cool. Well, that, I'm so, that, I'm, thank you so much for having me. Oh, I love it. I just love what you do. I, I think it's, it's, it takes tremendous talent and great imagination and, and discipline, you know, I mean, it's really, I really have a lot of respect for what you do. So keep doing it. Thank you. You're welcome. I will. You're welcome and come back anytime. Great to see you, Michael. I hope you enjoyed Michael Crouch. I certainly know that I did. Thank you so much for being with me today. And please like and subscribe to the channel and tell your friends, share, comment, and I'll have him back to answer any questions that you might have. Thanks again. Bye-bye. See you next week. <laughs>